Hi, I'm Diane Brady. This is Forbes Newsroom. And we are speaking with Maggie McGrath, who is the senior editor of Forbes Women. Maggie, welcome. Thanks for having me. We're talking about a story that you just did on the latest unicorn. Tell us more about that. Yes, I am thrilled to report it is a female-led. Yay. I know, I know. And led by a black woman, which is very rare. We see in the women's space that women get a very small percentage of overall venture capital dollars. That was 2% last year, and that's for all women. It drops when you look at women of color. So Dr. Iman Abuzaid co-founded Incredible Health. Incredible in Health. Incredible Health. It's, I it's love the name. It's a, it's a great name. It is, think of it like LinkedIn for nurses. We are in the middle of a huge staffing shortage mm -hmm. for a lot of healthcare workers in particular, but nurses especially. And what Incredible Health does is connect nurses to hospitals who are looking for permanent staff. And Why can't they do that on LinkedIn? Like, what's the value of a specific startup on this? There are very particular certifications. You know, you have trauma nurses, ICU nurses. LinkedIn is more office and white collar jobs and bedside manner. There are all sorts of things that you can't quite capture in LinkedIn mm -hmm. as when it comes to healthcare jobs. Um, my brother is a doctor. I have friends who work in healthcare and they all kind of joke that they've never applied for a real job. They feel like their job searching process is very different from what you or I might go yeah. through. And it's interesting because my mom was a nurse and that's hard work, those 12 hour shifts and such. So. Is, the, is it emblematic when you talk about the shortage of healthcare workers, nurses in particular? Have they been hard to find? Oh, immensely. Uh, there are, it depends on the hospital. So obviously rates change state by state. Some are facing larger shortages than others, but I think overall we can say about one third of hospitals have a vacancy rate of 10% for nurses. That's a huge, a huge gap. Yeah. And a huge gap in care. You, yeah, you certainly feel it when you're lying on a bed calling nurse and they don't come. Or waiting in the ER. Well, tell me a bit more about Incredible Health because um, when did it come on our radar, first of all? How old is it? Because it to, sometimes the trajectory to a billion dollar valuation can be very quick. Sometimes it's a slow burn. What happened here? This was kind of a mix of the two, you know, the cliche, first a little bit, then all at once. Uh, Iman and her co-founder founded the company in 2017, launched in about 2018. And this is a credit to Forbes and senior editor Amy Feldman. Amy identified Incredible Health last year in 2021 as a next billion dollar startup. It was not a billion dollar valuation yet, but the news I covered is an $80 million Series B round of funding that values Incredible Health at $1.65 billion. That's great. And so what are they going to do with the money? So they want to go national, and they eventually want to expand to other types of jobs. Right now, they're in about 25 states. They want to expand to all 50. They want to cover 90% of nursing jobs. And then they want to take this proprietary algorithm and this community, because there's a community aspect. You can ask for advice and career coaching that's very specific to healthcare workers. Mm -hmm. And Iman told me, you know, doctors can use it. PTs can use it. Any sort of healthcare position, job that a hospital or health center may need could eventually benefit. Did, did you, I always love the stories when I talk to female founders about going in and asking for money and, and some of the feedback they get. I know there's a lot more momentum around just frankly investing in black founders, female founders, et cetera. What was her experience? Her experience was a little bit different. She is a medical doctor. She skipped her residency and went into consulting and went into the business world because she wanted to have a bigger impact beyond the one-on-one -on -one patient dynamics. But I think her subject matter expertise really helps. Uh, she told me her company is cash flow positive. So we are in a very tough economic environment. And she said that when you walk into a room with investors and you can say, we've been very careful with how we manage cash and sales coming in and cash going out, it's a different conversation. And beyond that, uh, the lead investors of this round, Base 10, they are some people that she's known for the past five years. She's kind of been talking to them. They have an advancement initiative where they give back proceeds of their returns to historically black colleges. So she really liked that. They like that she's expanding economic opportunity to nurses. So it was perhaps not a typical, like, let's judge you little lady situation, mm -hmm. but obviously there are lessons for all founders. So doctor little lady doctor, to you, right? Exactly. Well, it, you know, I, I was um, talking about this actually with Alex Conrad recently, where he was looking at cloud companies, and there's so many 
there's so many billion dollars, so many unicorns now. We've got decacorns. Uh, I think the top of his list, Stripe, was close to being, I don't know if it's a hedricorn, but, you know, basically the valuations, there's so many of them, and yet there's still so few women um, in that category, and you mentioned it with VC funding. What in general is changing? Because I know that you also recently went to the All Raise Summit and you spoke to a lot of women there. Is this going to change rapidly, or is it really, again, trickling? Well, there are kind of two questions there. Is it going to change? Yes. Is it going to change rapidly? No. Okay. Let's I, start with the. Let's start with what you've been hearing a little bit. What about I've the been funding hearing. Environment. What I heard at the VC summit, the All Raise VC summit, and what I've been hearing for the past few years, because I have, for a number of years, looked at the next billion dollar startup list that we produce, and I look at the number of women, and then I talk to sources, and I say, why aren't there more women on this list? We are seeing flows of capital into the seed and Series A stages of companies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of early stage interest uh, for female founders, female check writers are writing checks to those who look like them. So there's a lot of activity there. What we need to then do is grow those companies to Series B, C, and later, so then we can hit more billion dollar startups. Great. Well, hope there's more stories to come. Maggie McGrath, thank you. Thank you so much.